Hammerdown Dino Service, in conjunction with Bettler Brothers Racing, presents... This is Hammerdown Dino Service. Uh, today, showing you how to set the coil gaps on your slingshot Briggs & Stratton V-Twin racing engine. Up on the stand here, we have a motor that's fresh back from Tobias that we had to reassemble. Uh, it saves you a few bucks if you take the motor apart down to the uh, short block when you send it out there, which means... When you get it back, you're going to have to reinstall your flywheel, your coils, carburetor, all the tin work and such. Uh, a lot of questions come up. People say their their engines aren't running right or, you know, they're having a problem with spark. They don't know how to set the coils. So either they end up paying somebody to do it for them or they just, you know, they're asking a lot. Uh, the correct gap, basically what you're trying to find here is between what they call the coil leg. There's two legs on each one here and the actual uh, surface of the flywheel where the magnet is uh, it's a, you need a .010 gap of air in there I have a, a long, nice long thin strip here that is that thickness, it's like a really long feeler gauge it's a good idea to get one of these because you can put this, it's very accurate first of all because it's made of steel and you can put it through both legs of the coil and then just set the gap uh, in a pinch in your garage, a business card is also a, pretty much a perfect measuring device. Um, most of those are just about dead on. Not really a whole lot of advantage to be found with different gaps, but you do want to check these periodically just to make sure one of them hasn't fallen down uh, and rub on the flywheel. And also if one has gotten knocked up by a rock or something like that and increase the gap, you could lose some of your spark voltage and the motor won't run right. Um, when you reinstall these, they have very small, brittle uh, bolts that go down and actually hold them right to these aluminum bosses on the block. These are easy to strip out. I like to put a little bit of anti-seize on them when I reinstall them. And they take a 7mm uh, wrench. They also have a Phillips head bolt uh, fastener on them, but it's not really you know, a preferred way to get them off just using a screwdriver. If you have the wrench, it it's a lot easier you know, not to strip them out and then you really have a, a tough time getting those little things out of there because they do break off quite often uh, if you're going to disassemble a motor for the first time I'd be prepared to break them off and uh, have to remove them but basically you want to make sure that your the magnet on the flywheel which is up here isn't going to interfere with how you're going to set these uh, and all you do is take your feeler gauge and slip it right in between here. It should slide in pretty easily. And then you can go right over to the other one here. Then you're going to loosen these up with the 7 millimeter. And then once they're loose, you just take a little bit of pressure, push it straight down onto the feeler gauge. Because that way you know if it's up against the feeler gauge, it's not going to go any more than the feeler gauge. And also you have it tight. So then you just snug them down on both sides and then slip the feeler gauge out and then put it back in again just to make sure that it does go in smoothly and that's basically all there is to set in the coils and if you have any further questions you can contact me at brian at hammerdowndino at yahoo.com